many people work here in Silicon Valley and have seen it grow? <laughs> yeah. Has that been fun? <laughs> yeah. What, what's your house worth? You know, is that fun? Yeah, there's all sorts of things that you say, why is education over here like a prison and yet we celebrate all this innovation around us? And our, I'm now in the education world, out of the high tech world, and I've taken people on tours of what we do. And one guy who is at uh, Pfizer stopped me at the end. He says, I, you know, it's reasonable that in a location like this region, which is known for innovation in industry, that there's also innovation in education. So what I want to do to you today is just give you a view of what might be possible on a widespread basis. We do it with 650 students, um, and we've been doing it since 1887. It actually works. And it really organizes people to participate in what's around outside them, connects them to the outside world. The, I was introduced as talking about fusion, but that's sort of like metallic, you know, it's sort of like jamming things together. This word emulsion has come from a guy out of USC, which is really it's about people are like oil and vinegar. You have to shake them up to make them worth something, right? And even more than that, you have to put a binder in like egg in order to make mayonnaise so they're stable and you can use them again and again, right? And so they're really looking at artists and engineers. And I'm just grouping. I mean, how many of your kids are like artist type people? Okay. How many of your kids are like engineer kind of people? Okay. Take one as being like analog people where they're all about movement and doing things and other ones as being digital people. And they're all thinking and, you know, these things have to come together. These worlds actually have to emulsify into teams in order to get things done. That's what we're all talking about. And if there's one word to take away from this talk, it's about finding purpose, who you are. Where do I fit in? Do I need to go to Tanzania in order to see it? Or can I do it right in my own backyard? Can I do it in college, right? So I'm gonna give you a glimpse and I'm gonna show you three students, tell you their stories, and maybe you'll see some of that in that. So, um, basically the game has changed is basically what we're saying. It's all changed in education because of this, right? We now carry all the world's knowledge in our pocket. It's a supercomputer, right? How many people use it that way? Eh, maybe not. Maybe we can teach people to use it that way. We also have access to all the world's expertise in communication. Kids do use it that way. They're on Facebook all the time. They, get, they don't have downtime. They, they're working up. Well, how can you engage them into useful ways to organize themselves to do useful things? That's what they're capable of doing. Are they allowed to do it? Typically not in high schools. In colleges, we do. <coughs> so three things they need to do. One level is you gotta have a skill. Sorry, this with your cell phone is actually sign language, right? And mediated, somebody across the world can respond to my signs, right? So why don't we teach how to, how to do things with that? In our side, art, drawing, singing, music, on engineering side, writing, storytelling, building things, okay? So our school takes the word sketch very seriously. So I've got some sketchbooks out by the front. When you leave, if you like one, just take one. Okay, there's some words about it, about what goes on at the school. But the idea is I'm giving you a sketch right now. I'm sketching. Everything that everybody's talked about here has been a sketch, right? When we teach sketching, which we require everyone to take, including engineers. If that's an arm, it's actually a bunch of lines and little circles and they connect and they move and you construct out of elements. That's actually what you do when you're programming. You have subroutines and you call them and you have variables and you put them in. Essentially, you have to make these worlds collide. And I use that word, it's not easy. 
it's force fit. And the number of collisions that you can create between those worlds makes people change how they see the world. So when you learn to sketch, you start saying, oh, that light is a little yellow reflected over there, and there's a little bit of a darkness. I started hearing the sounds. You know, something went there very quiet because it's baffled by these fine redwoods. We start seeing the world differently when we have a skill that we develop that's physically oriented, okay? The next step is teams. In colleges and high schools, they stick people in a corner and let's see if you got it. They said, I call that the university of what? What is it? I gave it to you, what is it? Did you get the right answer? I went to school at Berkeley, I call that the university of why? Why is that important? You know, morals, all those things, right. We're more talking about the university of how. How do you do it? How do you make thoughts turn into things? Right? That's what happens around here. How do you get together with people, throw ideas around, play with them, then you start organizing them, and you start experimenting with them, and then you develop them into something you want to do as a project. And then with that project, you're able to show it people and get feedback. You're able to then look back on it and say, I did that. That's who I am. I know my role, okay? So teams. And iterations is basically the thing. You don't learn the next step. The next step, no, you go back and go deeper, okay? That's sort of the methods that we got in place. So I think we're ready to talk to our first guy. So how am I doing on time, right? Good, good, good. This is Aaron Cohn. Um, so my job when I got there and I saw all these people doing projects, I was going, what's going on? I mean, I was a fish out of water. This is a college, and they said, come in. I was doing research on MOOCs, things like that, learning online. And, um, but I do video work. You know, I have a skill, so I could capture things on video. I could do interviews. And they said, could you do some interviews of students? And I said, I don't know which ones, I don't know what to ask, I don't know anything. And they said, well, I'll tell you what, we'll identify students that are worthy for an interview, and you can interview. I said, fine, but you have to leave and just have them meet me so I can do a first impression, right, interview. So I asked three questions. Number one question is, why did you go to Cogswell? Why did you choose to go here? And they tell me a story, you know, varying lengths. And then I'd ask, so what are you doing now? And these are all seniors who had done something well, right? And they tell me a story. And I'd look at them and say, those things are so different. What happened? And then they tell me something that was fascinating. And I'd capture that. We make a video about it. So this guy, he came in and he said, I was lazy. I was a bad student. I hated school. I I went to college in computer science and dropped out. I, you know, he went on and on. And then I came here and I discovered tutoring. He said, look, I will do this video and I know it's about this project where I built a front end to a render farm which allows artists to use a graphical user interface to be able to get their rendering job at the end of semesters and everybody's doing animations and things in the render farm you know, has to work on many people's projects and it bogs down. And what if somebody overrides things? You can't do that in command lines with artists. He built something for them, they all loved it. But he said, I'll do that, but I want to talk about tutoring. I said, well, sure, let's talk about tutoring. So he said that I learn by teaching others. Oh, what do you teach? And he went on in great detail about understanding that he was either reaching these people or he wasn't, okay? And that by being a tutor, he had to learn the material beforehand in order for them to get it, right? And then he starts talking about this render farm project that that allowed him to listen to what the customer needed. In other words, artists needed to manage through a graphic user interface what were the priorities, what should the software do, and he built it. It went very well, okay? Now, he's at work day you know, senior engineer. He graduated in 13, so three years ago. Um, 
software engineering. That's number one. Number two is this is Bakari Holmes. And when I first met him, it was at the food truck or whatever. Why are you here? You know, and he had been a physics teacher. He'd gone to college. He was teaching physics at Gunn High School. Uh, he wanted. To, he loved music. He just he could sing like Bobby McFerrin. You know, with the noise and the you know deep and all that stuff. And he wanted to do production of music, and that's why he was going to our school because we have a music production group. And then. Later on, I said, what are you doing? What are you up to? And he says, oh, I've changed. I'm, I'm going into engineering. I'm programming. And why? He says, because that's where the money is. I'm going to where I'm valuable, right? And, OK, great. That's good. What, what kind of engine? I'm going to build games. Why? Because I love video games. And I, now I want to build them. And we have a program for that. And so he dives into that. And, I think I did a little video of him. He'd just done an internship at Sony PlayStation down in San Diego, and he came back and he was talking about all the projects that he's working on, very proud. And he was gonna graduate the next year. Six months later, I see him, and I said, so how, how's it going? You know, how did Sony work? He said, that's good, but that's not what I'm doing. So what are you doing? I'm gonna be a full stack developer. Well. Nobody knows what a full stack developer is. He certainly did when he walked in, but through the iteration of working with people at Sony and going to meetups, working with other people outside the community, he figured out where the highest value is to walk out of college and apply into the workforce. Full stack means you can work on the back end database, you work on the APIs, you can work on all the transit level stuff as well as the UIs, right? He's now at Accenture, just graduated. Uh, doing JavaScript engineering. He can go into somebody and work through all the layers of what they're thinking of and help them articulate them <coughs> as software. And the final one here, she just graduated. Um, when I interviewed her, she said, I knew nothing when I came here. <laughs> and this is typical, coming out of high school, nothing. And I, in fact, that's part of one of the first things that kids have to get over. You do know nothing. We know nothing, right? And we move forward from there. She couldn't draw, but she was in an art program. Then she found she could be part of a team. She could be the glue that understood what each person in the team was speaking about and could figure out what she could do to move the project along. So she had four students in my office talking about doing a little mini project together. And one of them was a sketch artist. She did uh, environmental art, beautiful stuff. <clears throat> and then Mari, Mari Smith, said, oh yeah, I can render up that model for you. You just give me a hand-drawn thing. I'll put it into 3D in a 3D animation program so it's a fixed model. And then the next guy down the line says, I can take that and rig it. I can stick a skeleton into it. I can make the joints move. I can make it able to be able to move in a realistic way, right? And then the final person said, I can animate that. I can have that person do something in a scene to tell a story. Four different skill sets. But within an hour, they're coordinating with each other in order to get a job done. And she was sort of the ringmaster behind all that. So she's now working at Apple in an Apple project, um, working on annotation. She can't tell me what she's doing. but. Um, it has to do with photographs and recognizing faces and tagging them. And um, I ran into her and said, so how's it going? And she's, I, I, actually, I, I heard from the person in career services that, why'd she take that job? It uses this amount of her technical expertise. You know? And I told her that. And she says, oh, no, it's so awesome. <laughs> Apple's an amazing place. It's so good, and what I'm working on is so important. It's going to change the world. She was just, I mean, whew, whatever they're doing there, it sure got to her, right? So this is the kind of thing that people hire. They hire that sense of purpose, that sense of doing the things that machines can't do. And that's my final slide, which is sort of to sum up. You know, artificial intelligence is so good, it's going to replace a lot of people's jobs and what they do. But what it can't replace, sense of purpose, 
sense of agreement, sense of trust, sense of mission. The things that a lot of you guys are talking about going from one part of the country to the other part of the country and taking the salient bits and sharing them. That's what colleges really can do with the students that they have. So I thank you for your time and please get a sketchbook on the way out. Thank you. Oh. Questions? Do you want questions? Sure. Yeah. No, I have a question about Pixar. Yeah. Uh, they must be full of your students. They are. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, actually, one of our board members is also uh, a founder of Pacific Data Images as part of DreamWorks. So both of those places. Um, one of the people at Pixar, uh, a woman in her student project, I mentioned rigging, where you're building the bone structure, whatever. In her senior year, she decided to build the bone structures and the ligament structures for a rhinoceros. And she said, I had to invent a bunch of stuff because there's no books telling you what the you know, anatomy of a rhinoceros is. And she made it, moved it, made it wink and all this stuff and helped her get a job. Um, and, but you bring up a point. It's not about jobs. It's not, it's about purpose. It's about identity. And your job <coughs> is going to change. I've been in how many jobs? These people are gonna start here, then they're gonna go here. You're in engineering, then you're in technical support, and then you're in developer relations, and then you're in marketing. And as you go along, your ability to absorb, it's, it's like you're not what you are, what you started out. You're gonna be changed, and you're going to evolve as well. And so you're learning all the way. All we're doing is getting it started. We're able to take this first skills, teams, iterations thing, and in four years, you're going from private life as a kid and family to professional life where you can stand up and say, this is who I am, this is what I'm able to do, how can I help, right? You know, the beauty of Pixar is how they merge that with humor. That's right. That's funny stuff. It's all funny, that's why I'm saying, in fact, they have a Steve Jobs with Pixar in the architecture of the building, he only created one bathroom area. Why? He wanted to force collisions between people who wouldn't ordinarily see each other Unusual relationships are the best to develop. Yeah. How is, I don't know much about cultural college. Right. Uh, how have you evolved and grown over the years oh, and changed yeah. your own purpose? So in 1887, it was surveying, map making, right, yeah, garment construction. Uh, during the Second World War, there was a foundry in the basement and it was heavy metals and welding and aeronautical engineering. Uh, when Boeing, um, created a headquarters in Seattle. They created a Cogswell College to help them. Um, I have a friend who was a founder of Plexus Computer, and he had Cogswell engineers taking his architecture diagrams that could never be manufactured, making them manufacturing kind of thing. But we went all digital in 1994 with, with uh, Autodesk as a partner, and we basically uh, take industry standard tools for game design and development, uh, animation, uh, sound, and engineering. And we bring all those people together in order to build these. So you build video games, you build animated films, you build apps while you're in college, and you're able to point to those and say, I did that. So, and it's a four-year degree, so you know, BSBA. So we're in high school uh, today. Um, a lot of them are looking to say, UC Berkeley and computer science to do what you were describing. How do they wind up at Cogswell? I mean, how do you differentiate that? How do you get them to go to Cogswell instead? The word purpose. 40% of our students are transfers. They come from Berkeley. They come from Stanford. We got a guy from Russia. We got people from Kenya, Kansas, Bryn Mawr, all these different places. Started as an engineer, started as an artist, didn't like fine art, wanted to be applied, love video games, whatever. Um, we need to do a better job getting the word out to high schools and the counselors and the community college transfer offices to understand that there's a way to take your skill set and apply it and that this valley is searching for talent. It's not about what you know, it's what you can do, right? And you will know a lot in order to do these things. So um, 
We're, we're working on that now. Yes? Um, I know more and more uh, people are moving towards working remotely. Yeah. Um, it seems to go against your principles. Can yeah. You say something about it? That's a really good question. It's personal in the sense that I started by looking at MOOCs, you know, online education. And we're working with Udacity, right? How many people know Udacity? That name? It's an online services, uh, earn a degree, a nano degree by doing things online. Well, they have found that only if you take a nano degree online, only 5% to 8% actually finish. There's a big attrition rate. We now have a physical location once a week where people come in from 9.30 to 3.30 on Saturday or Sunday, machine learning. And instead of 5% completing, they're getting 50% completing. So the, and w when they tell me what's the value of coming together, it is it keeps them on beam. It keeps them on track. It's like what you're doing now when you meet each other. You're not thinking a lot. You're not, you go off, but it keeps you in the groove. You, 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 you mimic, you resonate, you, you, there's a lot of learning that's going on here that maybe it's not explicit, maybe it's tacit, but it's very powerful. Yeah. Where is Cotswell located? We're right at 237 in Zanker in San Jose. Yeah. Uh, what is the difference between Cotswell and let's say your curriculum there and the one at Foothill or does it yeah, if you want to take psychology and sociology and economics and all those courses, go there, take them. It's great. We've got people who do that. But if you want to be hands-on where the machines are available to you and you don't have to wait in line and you can be there at midnight, come to us. Yeah. Okay. Oh, one more. Let's do one more. What has the profession or the job of coding, coding, because my uh, family were talking the other night about what their children were going to do who are high school and college age, and they were saying, wow, coding is the new profession. Yeah. And I don't even know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so my answer to that is decoding is more important than coding. Right? How do I unpack what people are telling me, how do I look at something and break it into its parts, as well as how do I build part of it or improve it, right? So coding is just another tool. Like for me, I can take a video camera and do an interview. Other people are building data structures and figuring out what handlers they need to figure out to, to build software. So it's software development. But the process of building a project, so here's about engineers, what they don't want is they don't want to waste their time. They don't want to work on a project that goes nowhere. They want a project that will succeed. What they need more and more are storytellers. They need people who say, these are the kind of people who are going to use what we're hoping to build. This person's problem is this. They have these things going on with their life. They're going to intersect with our technology in these ways. They're going to get these benefits of it. And your code is going to help them do that. You know, now I get it. I know what to build. You know what I mean? The whole thing has to be laid out for them to be effective. Okay, well, that was a great talk. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much.